Hello, today we're looking at how social media marketing can help your business and in this podcast we're going to be looking at Facebook which is probably the most helpful marketing tool. Well I'm joined by Graham Majin who's head of video content and video marketing at Kirsch Media and Quickvid. Graham, if a business wants to do some social media marketing, where should it start? Okay, well there's a fantastic quote uh, by a guy called Avinash Kaushik and this is what he says. Social media marketing is like teenage sex. Everyone wants to do it. No one knows how to do it. After you've done it, you're disappointed it wasn't better. Um, I think the serious point there is that despite this huge hype surrounding it, uh, it's not a quick fix. It's a long-term commitment to building dialogue. It's it's not going to instantly solve any major problems you've got with your business. It's certainly not going to send your sales overnight through the roof. It's about building a long-term sensible relationship with your customers and potential future clients. Okay, you've managed my expectations, but how do I start? Well, every business is unique. Uh, So the most important thing before you start is you have to have some sort of strategy, some sort of plan for your business. It doesn't have to be complicated, it can be a very simple thing, but you have to have some idea of who you want to have conversations with before you can have those conversations. Let's look at an example uh, from Facebook. I'm going to start with Starbucks, which is the most popular business brand on Facebook. Starbucks has well over 5 million fans of their Facebook page. That means there are more than 5 million people who Starbucks can communicate with simply by posting messages or links on their Facebook page. That's an incredible business opportunity. Now if we take a quick look at the sort of conversations people are having on the Starbucks pages, we can see there are lots of people talking about what they like, what they don't like. Uh, Someone here is asking why Starbucks don't have cafes in Italy. Someone else is suggesting Starbucks bring back their reusable plastic cups. And someone here is asking for Starbucks to develop new, unusual flavours of tea. So, uh, lots of feedback and Starbucks using Facebook there is a great way to, to listen to what customers want and also hear about things that they don't want. And presumably it's not just about listening, it's also about influencing too. Yeah, the influencing is very, very important. Uh, Let me show you an absolutely fascinating example of how Starbucks uses Facebook to influence public opinion. So here's someone from the United States asking, is it true Starbucks doesn't support our troops? The question asks, is it true Starbucks refused to supply coffee to US Marines in Iraq? Now I need to point out that this rumor is completely not true. Uh, But you can see how something like this could be really damaging to a big company like Starbucks. Now, as we see here, just four hours after this first post was made, a very full and thorough response from someone appears. Now, I assume this is a Starbucks employee, though it doesn't actually say so. And the response, of course, denies the rumour and quotes Starbucks, also denying it. And the next day, this conversation continues and the original contributor backs down and says, I love Starbucks. So you can see one way in which a business here is using social media to channel and influence public opinion. And you'll find a number of big companies uh, who employ staff to monitor Facebook and influence discussions, often anonymously, about topics that are relevant and important. Okay, so that's great if you've got five million Facebook fans, but can you give us an example of small businesses using Facebook? Yeah, sure. Loads of examples. I want to show you uh, an example of a small business. Uh, It's a restaurant and it's in uh, Norfolk in the UK. This is the Facebook page of the Constantia Cottage Restaurant. I've never actually been there, but they have around 400 fans, as you can see. I think that's pretty good going for a small business. And again, this is a great opportunity for this business to have conversations with existing and potential clients. And we find, as with Starbucks, people are talking to each other about the restaurant. So here we can see someone's uh, offering a money off discount card for Chroma, which is a nearby town. There are people also using the restaurant's Facebook page to post videos. This is a video of someone's party. 
Uh, people are talking about their favourite meals, someone suggesting different entertainment and dancing acts at the restaurant should consider booking. And over here people are posting their photos of nights out at the restaurant. So I think this is a really good example of a small business creating an online community and a way of talking to existing and potential customers. And because it's Facebook, all these people's friends can see which pages they're fans of. And this can create a viral effect with more and more people joining. So how can other types of businesses do the same thing? You just have to have a strategy and you have to ask yourself who exactly do I want to have these conversations with? Okay, well I'm going to interrupt you there because I want to talk about that in part three of our guide to social media marketing. In part three we'll be looking at some practical tips and a guide to how you can market your business using social media. Hope you can join us then. For now then, goodbye.